But regarding the Vietnam issue, there actually is a written record, and I have a, some of it right here. If I can do the, if we can pull this up, Katie. Um, this is uh, this, the day that Kennedy issued a memorandum which called for a withdrawal from Vietnam. Was, uh, that was October 2nd. That was in SAM 263. And then this memo is sent out by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff two days later. And he says... It to, it's sent to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The program and progress to train Vietnamese forces will be reviewed and accelerated as necessary to ensure that all essential functions visualized to be required for the projected operational environment to include those now performed by the U.S. military units and personnel can be assumed properly by the Vietnamese by the end of calendar year 65. All planning will be directed towards preparing RVN forces for the withdrawal of all U.S. special assistance units and personnel by the end of calendar year 1965. And here it says, uh, you know, this goes on, execute plan to withdraw 1,000 by the end of 63, as approved by yada yada. Previous guidance on the public affairs annex is altered to the extent that the action will now be treated in low key as the initial increment of U.S. forces whose presence is no longer required because Vietnamese forces have been trained to assume the function involved or the function exactly. has been completed. So Meaning that Meaning they're not going to they, announce they win this the war, to make they can it, that that's not what they're saying. Wait, hold on, let, let they're not saying that. Respond. This is, there's no, it says here, all planning. It doesn't say all planning unless it goes bad and then we're going to send in a bunch of troops. Now, the year after that, or I'm sorry, a few days after Kennedy's assassination, you have this document here in Sam 273 and you see there are big strikes through it. And those strikes were made by LBJ because McGeorge Bundy told John Newman this years later that it was LBJ who asked that that be done. And this basically changes the language to allow for O-Plan 34A, which was these uh, assisted raids on the North with assistance from U.S. military personnel. And this was the provocation. This was, this was a step that JFK would never or never took in his lifetime. Um, despite being asked to do similar things. But Johnson immediately changes this insane, which had begun to be drafted under JFK, but then JFK dies, and they change it to allow for these provocative raids, which weren't very useful in terms of military value, but they do lead to the provocation of sorts in the Gulf of Tonkin, although actually the Gulf of Tonkin incident was basically a made-up thing. that they It wasn't even an attack that night that they did it. Uh, that they that led to the resolution. So this is an immediate change of policy. Uh, even Francis Bator, who was the deputy national security advisor, I believe, under uh, Johnson, he admitted to James Gal uh, in, in an exchange with James Galbraith that yes, the policy when Kennedy died was one of Viet of a withdrawal from Vietnam. But he, he goes on to say that well, Kennedy probably wouldn't have accepted defeat, so he he would have changed his mind. But we saw what happened with the Bay of Pigs, and Kennedy didn't change his mind there about no U.S. troops being involved. Uh, he, he chose to take the, the loss rather than start a war. JFK never started a war despite being under enormous pressure to do so over Cuba, the Bay of Pigs, and during the Missile Crisis, Vietnam in 61, he was asked time and again to introduce troops, and Robert Kennedy was there in the meeting, and every time he would repeatedly say, there will be no ground troops in Vietnam, over and over again, whenever he was asked about it. So they send advisors instead, quote-unquote advisors, but those guys end up doing fighting. But Kennedy was trying to pull them out. And a month before he dies, he pulls out a 1,000. And the day, the day that the NSAM 263, which calls for the uh, withdrawal, uh, was issued, there's an article in the in Washington newspaper in the New York Times saying that the CIA is totally out of control in Vietnam, and if there's ever a coup uh, in the U.S., it'll come from the CIA uh, and not the Pentagon, because they're totally unaccountable to nothing, to, to no one, and, and uh, especially in Vietnam, they're a huge disaster. So uh, you see that this is an uh, administration, as Arthur Schlesinger said, we were at war with the national security state, and uh, I think that that's what happened, and this is, um, this is the, you know, Nixon suspected the CIA was involved in, in Dallas. Uh, LBJ, RFK was going to reinvestigate it. Uh, as president, uh, a week after the assassination, RFK and Jackie sent a messenger to Moscow to say, we know you guys didn't kill Jack. Uh, it was a right-wing domestic plot. 
And uh, the quest for peace is going to have to wait because LBJ is too close to big business. But once RFK gets to the White House, the quest for peace will begin again. So they knew right, they knew right away what had happened. And um, this is uh, it's what they were trying to do, was to end the Cold War. JFK gives a speech about it in the summer, the so-called peace speech. Jeffrey Sachs wrote a, a whole book about it, and a, an accomplished academic and historian wrote a book on uh, a whole book on JFK's peace speech and his efforts to end the Cold War. And he's a very uh, erudite fellow who's spent a lot of time researching this case. He's not just some random person on Twitter, you know, saying like, "Oh, Chomsky said this," and uh, Alex Cockburn said that, and you know, he he actually did his homework. Well, you don't even know how to pronounce the name Coburn, so leaving that aside. Uh, it's. I mean, it's interesting to just disregard everybody who had the the same view on the uh, sort of infantile reinterpretation of JFK that was being done for commercial purposes when this movie came out, which coincided with a huge sort of PR push, and it was the uh, popular movie, and it had a big impact in terms of I think the triggering Congress to do something worthwhile, which is bring about the declassification or at least the release of records that had been under uh, seal and, and not being uh, not been released for a ridiculous length of time. So, you know, in making this argument, I'm not defending in any way the secrecy of the CIA or any other security state uh, agency or even suggesting that, you know, that the Warren uh, Commission had it all right. I mean, that's not the point. The point is that the ambiguities or the um, potential chicaneries of various agencies in the 60s and onward as regards the, 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 as regards the JFK assassination doesn't then justify this leap to the conclusion that JFK was ending the Cold War or wanted to, like that requires some sort of telepathic um, extrapolation of motive on the part of a dead president to know that this is what he wanted to do. And that has to be then divorced from the factual record. So all of this then has to lead to the interpretation that initiating the largest military buildup in U.S. history in peacetime, that was just part of the secret plan to, quote, end the Cold War, constantly reaffirming his belief in the veracity of the so-called domino theory and then taking actions in concert with that belief. That's just all part of the secret plan for which there's no actual documentary evidence. And on and on and on with this, um, this and, and, the, and the idea that there's no evidence of the uh, of Kennedy being behind the assassin, the, the years long assassination campaign in Cuba is just false. I mean, there's it's all, it's it's all CIA, hearsay. It's not hearsay. It's, it's I mean, it's well, I mean, so show me if, the document. Then. So, so you say hearsay for Kennedy partisans saying decades later that they have this belief as to what his ultimate motive was. That's not hearsay, but contemporaneous records of the hand picked CIA, CIA emissary, this guy Desmond Fitzgerald, who was appointed by. Kennedy to oversee Cuba operations and re recording that he was given a mandate to come up with a plan with unlimited policy and funds to enact a regime change in Cuba. That's not evidentiary, uh, evidentiarily valid somehow. I, I mean, mean the a, CIA a, is a bunch of murderers and liars, so I wouldn't well, then why was, if well, anything I mean, that the CIA says so without thrilled? rock solid so, documentation, I, so, I wouldn't so, take, okay, take seriously. So, right. So, so that. Right. So that's all stricken from the record, even though JFK is uh, established beyond any reasonable doubt to have been a huge fan of the covert policy options that were afforded to him by way of the CIA. 